Britain. Um, do you agree with what the judge had to say today? Um, I do, I'm afraid. I, James Mumby is a very senior judge and a very well-respected um, judge, but I'm afraid what he said today is nothing new, and I'm afraid it's just one aspect of the shortcomings of mental health services in this country at the moment, and particularly for children and young people, and particularly for vulnerable uh, children and young people. And I agree with everything that Nikki's just said, and it's absolutely right that she's come forward and will speak up um, about it, because this is quite a severe wake-up call, and we've got to do a lot, lot better for, for kids in our country who are suffering these sorts of uh, mental illnesses. Well, what will happen to X, the, 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 the woman involved in the case the judge was talking about today. He wants her in a low secure unit. It's one where she's not there held and secured to stop her attacking other people. She's not a danger to the public, but she is a danger to herself, clearly. There, there, there aren't yeah. that many beds. There just aren't that many. There are, I think it's 120 or something of them in, in the whole of England. What, what is going to happen to her if there isn't one of those beds? Yeah. Well, it looks as though in this case NHS England has come forward and they've identified three places that may be able to and hopefully will be able to offer her a bed when she needs it and hopefully be able to offer her the support and the care and protection that she needs for as long as it takes. But this is a high profile problem today, but I'm afraid it's something that happens all too often. There is a shortage of beds uh, generally, uh, certainly at the severe uh, end. There's certainly a shortage of beds for those people who need uh, help because they're a harm to themselves potentially, but also in some cases they're a harm to others if they're um, out uh, at large. Um, but also we have got to do much better, as Nikki said, on not just crisis management, but early detection yeah. and prevention. And that means getting uh, more staff in at an earlier stage, earlier detection and early support and effective support. And it's not happening in too many cases at the moment. I don't know, did you see the piece in the New York Times last week? It was a long read about the sort of England as this pioneering nation on mental health. I just, is that right? Are we doing something? Or did New York Times normally gets things right? I mean, but it, it did read a bit strangely with what um, we know I, about mental health treatment here. I didn't see that piece and I was a bit uh, surprised by it when you, when you said it. But look, there are some really good services in this country in, in all parts of the National Health Service and in mental health as well. The problem is there's not nearly enough of it. Now that's why, to give the government the credit, more money has been um, announced, 1.3 billion. And earlier this week, uh, Jeremy Hunt said that we're going to be recruiting another 21,000. It's a lot of people and it's going to be a big challenge in mental health over the next five years and the five year um, plan. Now, I want to see that come to uh, fruition, but the problem is there are too many young people um, now whose mental illness is not picked up early enough. And remember, if a half of people who have a mental illness problem, that will develop before they reach the age of uh, 14. And if you don't do something about it uh, early, then of course it festers and goes on and become a much uh, worse and severe illness um, later on. We've got to detect early. We've got to have the people there who can offer all sorts of appropriate therapies in appropriate um, settings and quickly. It would be a national scandal if we expected people who have symptoms of cancer to wait six or 12 months before they got specialist uh, treatment. Everybody... Why should it be any different from somebody suffering from a mental illness? Everybody agrees with that, but there's a certain sort of parallel in this conversation to the one we had on the programme last night about prisons. Everybody agrees it is ridiculous how we've let mm. prisons slip. We have a Tory former minister on saying, yes, we haven't dealt with prisons properly. Today we have a Tory former minister on saying we haven't dealt with ch children's mental health services properly. What is the country supposed to do? I mean, you've been in government for the last seven years, you people, and, and short of you well, leaving your party and joining another one to get something done, what, what, what is the country meant to do? We look to you to, to get well, this I right. I, I, OK, let's not make this a, a, a big party political issue, because frankly, we've not got mental health, particularly in CAMS, right in this country for many, many years. And as I start off by saying, the case today uh, is not uh, a one-off case by, uh, by any means. And the thing that links your interview last night and, uh, and this one is mental health, because mental health is a big, big problem uh, in, uh, in prisons. I think there is a mindset still amongst NHS management that mental health is a secondary 
uh, uh, issue and is not a priority. And for all the good words about parity of esteem, it is not actually there in practice. And that is why the extra money that's going into mental health, not nearly enough, but at least it's extra money, real money going into uh, mental health, is not getting to the sharp end where it's really needed. And it's been diverted into repairing the hospital roof or other crisis management in other parts of the health service. That has got to stop. It's got to be ring fenced and we need proper practitioners giving that service at the sharp end when it's needed. Tim Lawton.